Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our second part to a three-part series entitled Salt and the Light. And today's message is called Be the Light, Part 1. Last week we talked about being the salt. We found out some interesting things. So if you haven't seen that message, I would suggest that you click on the link below and just view it. Now, Jesus said that we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. We found out in last week's message what Jesus actually meant by if salt loses its taste, or in some versions it says if salt loses its savor. And other versions it says if salt loses its saltiness. And again, just click on the link below and it'll take you straight to to that message and you can check it out there. Okay, turn with me please to our scripture which is found in Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. He was speaking to the crowd. He was just speaking to his 12 apostles, but he was speaking to the crowd. In verse 14, it, and it, it says that, that the crowd there was huge. It was a huge crowd. And so if he was speaking to that huge crowd, he's also speaking to you and to me. Light was created the very first day when God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, it said, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. So what exactly is light? According to the Dictionary of Biblical Languages and Semitic Domains, light, that is, that which is contrast to darkness, such as in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 that we just read, Note, in some contexts with the associative meaning of guidance, health, life, prosperity, enlightened judgment, and other positive things. So first, light is that which is contrast to darkness. So what exactly then is darkness? According to wikipedia.org, darkness, the popular opposite of light of brightness, is understood as a lack of illumination or an absence of visible light. End of quote. If darkness is the opposite of brightness, or rather, if it's the absence of light, then we had better start spreading the light, since we are the light of the world. Because light represents all that is good and useful in life. It's, it's good for guidance, it's good for health, life, prosperity, enlightened judgment, and other positive things. And darkness represents the lack of all of those things that we just listed. So without light, there is no life. And we are that light. We are Jesus' representatives here on the earth. But someone would say, hey, 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 wait a minute. We're not the light. Jesus is the light because Jesus said that he was the light of the world. Well, in the words of the Grinch, wrong oh, and somebody say, What? Well, if you don't believe me, look at what Jesus said about himself about being the light. Look at John chapter 9, verse 1 through 5. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, 
It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. And pay close attention to the next verse, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So I want us just to focus on this, the, 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 this, verse, the, this verse right here, verse, verse 5, for just a few more minutes. The first thing I want you to notice is what Jesus says. He says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus was very clear when he made that statement. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But Jesus is no longer in the world. He said it's expedient that he must go away. Why? Because he would send the Holy Spirit. He could not send Holy Spirit unless he himself was to go away. He's seated right now at the right hand of God the Father making intercessions for us. So Jesus is not here right now. So he himself is no longer the light of the world. He said, now you are the light of the world. So if Jesus is no longer in the world... He's no longer the light of the world. And that's why Jesus passed that commission on to us, his believers. We are not to bring the light, the, the, the knowledge of God, the goodness, the list of things that we just listed above. We're to bring that now to a dark and dying world. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light. Of the world. Now, I want us to, to, to take a look at the context in which Jesus spoke those, those famous words. They, they're, they're encouraging words. They're commissioned words. And keep in mind what light represents. Remember we just went over it? It represents all that is good and useful in life. It represents guidance, health, life, prosperity, enlightened judgment, and other positive things. So, so think about these things. Keep these things in mind as we delve a little bit into the context of when, when Jesus said it. In the context, it was talking about the works of God being displayed. And working while it is still day. Because the night is coming when no man can work. The bottom line, when we are the light of the world, we are to show God's good work, his good works that we might glorify him, that others may see our good works and glorify God in heaven. We should have signs and wonders and miracles in our meetings. We should have healings when we pray for the sick. We are to be the light of the world. We bring prosperity. We bring life. We bring health. We bring guidance. So we must show God's light when now. While we can still work. While we still can, can, can show God's light. Because a time is coming when darkness will overtake the whole world. And forbid the working of light. That time is upon us, I'm afraid. And my friends, if you look around, just take a look at what's going on. That time is not far off. So we are to be the light of the world, which would include all types of, uh, of light. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, you would. Here is a type of light that we should be representing as well. The word orpane means light. But... This light means bright continence, formerly light of the face, that is an appearance of the face that shows positive, happy attitude, as in Job chapter 29, verse 24, Proverbs 16, verse 15. Also favorable and favorable circumstances and a relief from trouble and danger, as in Psalms chapter 4, verse 7, and Psalms 44, verse 4. 
You know, I see a lot of Christians going around with these long, angry faces. They go around with these long, sulky faces. Like, they have nothing good and nothing good has ever happened to them. And nothing good is going to be coming to them. They have nothing good to share. But we have the good news. I want to tell you that that is not being or pane, the light, the, the continents of the face. Because we have good news. We have the words of life that we have, to have been taught by Jesus himself. We are to be this kind of light. We have to be a guidance, a guiding light. We are to be a health light. We have to be the life. The prosperity, the enlightened judgment, and other positive things when we are being the light. Some churches, though, have turned 180 degrees and begun heading in the opposite direction. They're running into the darkness, away from the light. They're spreading a hate gospel, facilitating a communistic takeover of the world. There's a way that seems right unto a man. Because they're heathenistic, communistic governments who is bent on population control. Tell them that is the right way, is the right thing to do. It's good and just. Because obviously God is dead and his word is outdated. But the end of that thought, the end of that way, my friends, is death. The Bible tells us. So don't be fooled into compromising God's word. Don't let money-hungry, power-grabbing politicians lead you astray like they're leading the majority into certain death. We are the light, and light will always give direction by illuminating the path. Look with me at Psalms 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When we preach and teach God's word, it lights our own path. And then it lights the path of our hearers. Those that we're preaching to, those that we're teaching. Their lights should be illuminated that they may walk, that they may not stumble. That their feet may not get caught in the trap. Light does not struggle with darkness. Darkness never, ever overcomes light. Light will always prevail because Jesus is the light and no darkness can overcome his light. Nowadays, scientists tell us that there are black holes. Black holes so dark that it swallows up light. I'm here to tell you that that is impossible, utterly and purely impossible, totally, completely impossible. Impossible. These are the same scientists who teach you that you came from apes and that there is no God and science is the only truth. They are liars. In the words of Jude, these people blaspheme all that they do not understand and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasonable animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them, for they walk into the way of Cain and abandon themselves to the sake of gain to Balaam's error and perished in Korah's rebellion. These are hidden reefs. Waterless clouds swept along by winds, fruitless trees in late autumn. Twice dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up the foam of their own shame. Wandering stars from whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. They teach lies. And they teach these lies as fact and call all who do not agree or who do not accept these lies as stupid if you refuse to believe what they say and you choose to believe that God exists and that God is coming back one day and that all that we see it has been created and designed by a holy and mighty and awesome God. Here's what John says in chapter 1 verse 5. It says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. As I said earlier, I have never seen a struggle between light and darkness. As you walk into a dark room and you flick that switch, quicker than the eye can even see, the darkness changes to light. The darkness 
flees away so, so quickly, you, do, you didn't even realize that it was even there. Because no darkness can overcome light. I want you to take a look at this headlines. This is a headline that, that, that just came out. International Business Times. I'm quoting their, their, their headline. Newly discovered black hole could swallow entire universe, scientists warn. Think about this. Think about this for just a moment. A black hole so terrible that it has the potential to swallow up not just the earth, or not just our galaxy, but the entire universe. Now, I want you to consider this. This is what www.nasa.gov says about the size of our universe. And I want to quote. They put, it in a, they put a question forward first. This is their question. Quote it. So how big is the universe? Answer. No one knows if the universe is infinitely large. End of quote. Scientists tell us that the universe is ever expanding at a tremendous rate of speed. It is not a constant thing, it's an expanding thing. Whether that is reality or whether that too is lies is besides the point. The point is, is that our, our universe is supposed to be so huge that we can't even measure it. But yet one black hole can swallow up, has the potential to swallow up the whole of the universe. One single black hole can do all of that damage. So pray tell, where, where would that black hole exist? And why has it not swallowed up the whole of the universe? It is fear. Fear is what it is. They are nothing but fear mongers. And they have weaponized this thing called fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. One of the saddest statements ever spoken is, our government is not looking out for our best interests. They are bent on population control, and COVID-19 is one of the weapons that they're utilizing. They unnecessarily shut down the whole world. They shut it down in 2020. Ever ask yourself or even consider why? And the vaccines? They're bent on these vaccines. I went to a site to find out some statistics. And... And this is what they said, and I quote, Small and medium-sized enterprises are the lifeblood of the global economy. Although often overshadowed by enterprise counterparts, in reality, the small and medium-sized enterprises are responsible for a large proportion of new jobs in countries around the world and are the core of competitiveness and innovation. A 2019 report by the Office of Advocacy in the U.S. showed that, that small, um, small and medium enterprises were responsible for 44% of economic activity. Similarly, in Europe, the SME sector is the backbone of EU economies. They are responsible for the majority of new jobs in the European Union. End of quote. But the site, that same site, we have the link on the bottom, went on to say that 96% of SMEs in the U.S. has been impacted by COVID-19 shutdowns by March 2020. By April, almost 40% of SMEs in the U.K. were planning on laying off 75 to 100% of their staff. By May, 90% of firms in Thailand were expecting extreme revenue losses. 
The research also showed that female-owned businesses were 5.9 percent percentage points more likely to have closed their businesses than their male counterparts, according to the Small Business and, and Entrepreneurship Council. Here's another quote. The December 2020 level of employment was down by nine by 8.9 million jobs compared to the pre-pandemic February 2020 level. If we go to trackTheRecovery.org, which is a project of Harvard and Brown University, the latest estimates accessed on January 20 point to 29.7% of small businesses closing from January 2020 to December of, the, uh, of um, 2020. Applying that average of closures to the, to the universe of small, small businesses result in an estimated 9.4 million small businesses closed up, end quote. So I got to thinking, I got to considering, and I got to wondering. So I went to, to another website called BillGatesMicrosoft.org, net worth. I wanted to know what his, his net worth was back in two, 2018. They got it estimated at 96.2 billion dollars just ahead of Warren Buffett. That's 2018. So I wanted to know how much he lost. So I looked it up. And celebrity net worth 123.org. I mean dot com, I'm sorry, dot com. They have his net worth in 2020 estimated at 100 and $31 billion. Thought, wow. Pandemic seemed to be good there. So I looked up Dr. Anthony Fauci's net worth. Some estimated his net worth somewhere around $10 million. Back in 2018, Dr. Fauci earned $384,625 as a medical officer at the National Institute of Health loca located in Bethesda, Maryland, according to the International Business Times report. Then I went a little further. What did he earn in 2019? Surely. He took a hit. I found out that he earned $417,608,000, making him the highest paid federal employee at the time, even higher than the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and higher than the President of the United States of America, the highest paid federal employee. So I wondered, what about 2021? Multiple media outlets quote the National Institute of Health as saying Fauci is now paid $434,312,000. So I want you to think about this for just a moment. Just think about this for a moment. While businesses are struggling to pay their bills, while businesses are struggling to pay their staff, while business are struggling to, st to stay afloat, some can't. They've sunk, they've closed their doors forever, eating up all the savings of their investors. Their employees are being laid off. Their employees are being let go. Their employees are being furloughed for months, some, sometimes weeks, but for months at a time. Putting these people in financial hardships. And I might add, at the insistence of Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci. And these two men keep getting richer 
and richer, according to what we just read. Robert F. Kennedy's son, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he claims that Dr. Tony Fauci and the Gates Foundation stand to make a hefty profit from the, from, from the manufacture of COVID-19 vaccines. End of quote. Seems like he could be right. I don't know. I can only tell you what the statistics say. They're certainly, though, one thing for sure, they're certainly not feeling what the rest of the economy is feeling. And that's for sure. While we're shining some light, because we are the light in the darkness. So while we're shining some light in this darkness, I want us to think about this. And again, this is not me, right? This is a research paper that, that was done during the onset of COVID-19 in Barcelona. And they listed the following findings. One of those findings were, zinc balances immune responses and also has given direct antiviral action against some viruses. So what does that mean? It means that zinc is a known proven antiviral mineral. It's known for its antiviral compounds. Zinc, number two, zinc um, deficiency is a common condition in elderly and individuals with chronic diseases. Low zinc levels at clinical admission associates with poor outcomes in COVID-19. Okay, well, what is that saying? It's saying that if patients had low low zinc levels in their body when they checked into the hospital for COVID-19, they died. And let me ask you this question. Who is the most susceptible or the most at high risk for COVID-19? Yes, you guessed it. The elderly and those with existing health problems. And those are the ones with the low zinc levels. Now you know why they are the most high risk. The other finding was increased intracellular zinc. Let me start over. Increased intras, intracellular zinc concentrates effectively impair replication, uh, replication resulting in a lower number of viruses. Which means that these patients with zinc stores in their cells stop the virus from reproducing itself. And that is what the doctors want. Baseline zinc levels, they are the finding, baseline zinc, zinc levels in 249 out of 611 patients that were studied. This is what they found. Out of, the, out of those 249 patients, 21 died. And, and, and those 21 people that died had an average zinc level of 43 micrograms per deciliter. What about the 228? Well, it was 228 people who survived. They had zinc levels of an average of 63.1 micrograms per deciliter. So that brings us to the next finding. They found higher levels of zinc associated with lower maximum levels of interleukin-6 during period of, in, of active infection. What that is saying is the higher the level of interleukin-6, the higher the level of inflammation. The higher the level of inflammation, the more risk of diseases. The higher the level of zinc, the lower the interleukin-6 or the lower the inflammation. I want to read two more findings for you. Zinc levels found 
or zinc le levels lower than 50 micrograms per deciliter at admission increased um, risk of in-hospital death by 2.3 times compared with the 50 micrograms of deciliter or higher. What that is saying that if they had levels of 50 micrograms per deciliter, if they had zinc lower than that, they died. If they had levels, zinc levels higher than the 50 micrograms of deciliter, they lived. Last finding I want to read for you. Lower zinc levels at, at admissions correlate with higher inflammation in the course of infection and poorer outcomes, meaning the mor mortality rate was higher. It increased. So the lower the zinc levels, the higher the mortality rate, the higher the death rate. So the question that screams to be answered is why has this not been explored? Why are we not talking about this? Why are doctors and scientists not researching this? Why is this not on the news? Why is CNN not covering this sort of stuff? Why has a huge darkness overshadowed this? And no light is being shined on it. I want to know, why is it that instead of natural remedies that actually work, they are pushing a vaccine that is causing just as much, if not more, problems than the virus itself? Does it have anything, I'm just wondering, does it have anything to do with money and population control? Asking for a friend. I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm bringing it to a close. But listen to this. Listen to this. How fear has overtaken the world. And no light is being shined. In the UK... The, the UK ministers are wanting higher risk settings in England, including nightclubs, to use the NHS COVID pass. And the government is planning on making it law by the end of September, by the end of next month. So what is an NHS COVID pass? It's, it's a card. It can be either a digital or a paper that, that, that shows proof that you've been vaccinated. Some, some clubs, some nightclubs, and other venues are already requiring the NHS COVID pass to enter. And it's not just big countries. Little countries, little tiny countries are following suit. They, they, they'd rather shoot themselves in the foot because of fear. Look at this. Travel to the Cayman Islands is restricted only to residents. Essential travel. You have to be a resident and it has to be essential travel. And will require uh, quarantine with or without the vaccines. You're going to be in quarantine if you have to essentially travel. Also, more and more of their businesses down there are requiring all of their employees to be vaccinated. Even right here in the U.S., international travelers are required to show a negative COVID-19 test. And that test cannot be older than three days before travel. And that is with or without vaccines. So what is the vaccine supposed to do? You still got to show a negative test for these so are you saying that you can still catch the COVID-19 with your vaccine? Your dangerous vaccine? Disney is requiring all of their staff to be vaccinated in the next 60 days. Other countries are following suit. Or other companies are following suit. 
The Defense Secretary of the United States, Lloyd Austin, um, announced that he is, is working to make the COVID-19 vaccine mandatory for all military personnel. Whether it's, a, it's, it's against your will or not. If you can't work because you refuse to take an unknown and untested vaccine, that is a potential danger to your health, how can you buy food? How can you buy, sell, or trade? That sounds eerily like something foretold in Scripture, somewhere in Revelation. Now, I'm not trying to say, I'm not even trying to suggest that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. I'm just saying that it's acting like it. You can't do this if you don't have a vaccine. You can't do that if you don't have a vaccine. But it does nothing for you. You're still in quarantine. you still got to be tested. So, what I'm saying is this. The end is near. Jesus is coming back for us, and he's coming back real, real soon. And so I want to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready for his return? These questions posed are very serious questions. And I'm here to tell you that the end of the end is near. Are is your soul right with God? Is your house in order? Are you ready to meet your creator and your judge? If you are, good. Good for you. But if you're not, you can be. My friends, we don't have a whole lot of time to be messing around. We don't have a whole lot of time to be just dilly-dallying anymore. Those days of laxity are gone. They're behind us. Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look. The field is white on the harvest. My friends, the Lord is coming back. Are you ready? There's going to be a day when we have to stand before the judgment seat. Do you have an advocate in Jesus? If you don't, you can. Pray prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Help me to live for you. Rebuke that spirit of fear that has come upon me. Give me the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Help me to be the light. Help me to be the salt. Help me to live for you. And I'll give you thanks. I'll give you praise. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He loves you. He died for you. He cares about you. He wants you to live with him forever. Even if nobody else ever wanted you in your life, Jesus wants you. He loves you. So if you prayed that prayer, what I suggest you do is to buy yourself a Bible. Get a highlighter and read your Bible every day. I need you to read it. Read it with your eyes. And highlight the verses in there. All those verses, those promises that are meaningful to you, highlight them and memorize them. Because there's coming a day when we, the scriptures will be taken away from us. We won't be able to get those anymore. Memorize it. What you have hidden in your heart, 
No one can take it away from you. Next thing I want you to do is to find a Bible-believing church. Not a progressive church, a Bible-believing church who still believes in holiness, who believe, still believes in righteousness, who still believes that Jesus is God and that he's coming back and he's coming back real soon. And we have to change the way that we live, the way that we talk, the way that we act. We just can't live any old way and believe that we're going to make it in. We are a changed people. The things that we used to do, we do them no more. We live for righteousness. We live for holiness now. Sometimes we might fall down, but we get up. We brush the dust off and we plug on. I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. And I would like to invite you to join us next week for the conclusion of Be in the Light. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.